Today's session. Okay. Um, the thing is, we will start off with uh, the PPT. What I need from you is that you should tell me if you're ready with the notepad here. Just let me know if you are ready with the notepad. Um, People are telling me in the chat that they are unable to listen to my voice. But now you should be. I'm sure you do listen. Uh, you are able to listen to this now. Okay, so let me know if you are ready with the notepad because I am excited to bring this uh, to you. I think people are ready. They are saying that in the chat and let us begin. So let us dive straight into what this is we are going to discuss about what the uh, SSE question paper for the higher level looks like so the first thing is the paper pattern now one more thing I'm going to explain you the slides one by one we we'll, we are going to go through the slides one by one but make sure that you don't make your notes while I'm explaining I'll say it again. Do not write in the notepad while I'm explaining everything, the content on in the slide. After I'm done with the explanation, I will give you specific time for you to jot it down and make your notes. So please don't uh, jot it down while the slide, the explanation is in progress. Okay, fine then. So this was what I was talking about, the paper pattern. So the English paper of 100 marks. The way it will be divided is in the 80-20 pattern. So you will have 80 marks of written and 20 marks of oral exam. Now the 20 marks uh, oral is going to be conducted by your school. So the, those marks are with the school. And of course, you're going to attempt the written uh, paper for 80 marks. So jot this down quickly. I shall give you about a minute to copy this. Just a minute and that should be fine. Take it very seriously and please jot it down. One minute for you to jot it down. Hello everybody. Finally, I'm so happy that we are doing this 10 standard thing. And wherever it is that you are writing, make sure that you are going to keep the same book with you. You need to make proper notes. And please let me know in the chat window as soon as you are done so let us see what our guys are saying in the chat one guy saying done so okay so most of them are done now so let us get back to what we were doing i was talking about these uh, this, this, this distribution here so you would find that 80 marks are to be appeared in written form and 20 marks oral so let's continue what is going to be the pattern for the oral examination? Well, it will be an internal exam conducted by the school. It covers both the speaking and the listening skills. The school teacher will decide the dates, marks, etc. It is up to her. So they, that's why you call them the internal marks. 
the average score in the oral e exam is well over 15. So I have rarely seen anyone get less than 15 marks out of the 20 mar total marks. So it's very important that you remember this. Uh, it's conducted by the school. It's the first point. It includes your speaking and your listening skills. The, the date will be decided by your school teacher and uh, the average score is over 15. So again, I'm going to give you uh, two minutes this time for uh, jotting this down. Let's give you two minutes. Please make sure that you are using your time at hand here. There your time starts. The oral exam. This is something very important. Those 20 marks come in handy. Jot it down properly. There is no, it's not a speed contest. Nobody, I repeat, nobody is going to say this in every lecture. We are dedicating the first hour of our 10 standard studies for this. So it is very important. And I know this, I do this every year. You should know your enemy so that you can win the battle. A minute more. By the way, when we do the section wise weightage, it is uh, something that you would have to uh, draw, make a, a graphical representation. So I am really excited about it because I'm sure you guys draw better than me. And uh, the other thing is that you should pass this on to your friends as well in case they have missed this session. Make sure that uh, they watch this session. It will be there in the videos on our channel. And I guess now last 15 seconds are remaining. So everybody must be done with it. Yeah, they are saying that they are done. I'm just going to wait for the final 10 seconds. All right, the time is up. And uh, as I was saying, there is something that is in a graphical manner and so maybe a pie chart and you would have to draw and I'm sure you'll do a good job with that. Your drawing is better than mine. Um, I was saying that in case there are friends who are missing this session, make sure that you tell them about it. This video will be there in our channel. Okay, let us proceed further. Um, what I'm going to, I just told you about the oral thing and now what we are going to do is shift our focus straight to the written exam so how is the written exam going to be the total marks are 80 and the duration is 180 minutes which means the three hours okay now i just have to say one point in this very important just the one point there is no need for you to make haste just like maybe some people do in the videos the time is to be utilized. Some people just write it very hastily and feel proud when they finish the paper with uh, like half an hour to spare. Well, you could have done better things. So when I say 180 minutes, we'll talk about time management in depth later, but uh, just make it a point that you have to use the allotted time. Okay, that is the point I want to make here. So let's get back to the discussion the paper pattern and the overview. Now, this is the one thing that will take the majority of our time. I will uh, say this one more time that you should not write down anything while I am explaining, especially not on this slide. I repeat that is very important because I'm going to explain you the content, go through it properly and I promise I'll give you enough time to write it down. Okay. So this is how your written paper is going to look like. Okay. Um, first question, let us deal with it. First question one by one is going to be about language study. 
is a very important component the language study question one and there will be questions sub questions a and b so what can you expect in the language study here language study will be uh, will consist of the easy level questions medium and the challenging questions the the level of difficulty in the ascending order easy medium and challenging well in the easy and medium category you would have the questions for four marks each so the total will be eight we will come to it later about what topics have been uh, given by the board which we have to study in the subsection b well that is where you will have your challenging questions and there will be two marks for that so there may, might be just a single question but a tricky one a challenging one so that makes the total 10 here the next is the textual passages what you also know as the scene passages so this is going to be the question number two and again there is going to be subsection so, so a and b so there will be two scene passages that's why a and b and each passage will be for 10 marks so that is another 20 marks we will talk about what sort of questions are there in the scene passage uh, in some time. The third section is the poetry section. Now it is important for you to understand that there are again, this is question number three and there are two sections A and B. The scene poem comprehension and there will be only one single poem. So the passages if you notice there were two scene passages as far as the poems are concerned uh, there is just going to be one one scene poem and for five marks but the um, appreciation of the poem will be asked for five marks and we are going to study that also in depth so that you are able to write it uh, properly and of course i will share some important tips with you will help you get more marks uh, when it comes to the critical appreciation there is a certain method to do it and they will give you the extract from the poem and then they will expect you to write the critical appreciation. The point to be noted is that there will be no option here. There will not be any option here. So you got to keep those things in mind. So you have to, in short, what I'm saying is you have to study critical appreciation of all the poems. Why, why do I say that? It's because there will not be any choice. So you better study the critical appreciation. It is merely a work, a hearting work. So I'm sure throughout the year, if you know, if you study the poems, you will do a very good job there. What else do you find here? The fourth section is the non-textual passage, which you also call as the unseen passage. Again, there will be two sections here. This is question number four and section A and section B. So in the section A, you will have the unseen passage just like your scene passage for 10 marks, I repeat, you'll see the scene passage for 10 marks, the unseen passage is also for 10 marks and there is a 5 mark question on summary of the passage. So you are required to provide the summary of the passage. Again, I will say this that you don't have to worry how to write the summary, how to make it, uh, you know, summarize it, how to cut it short by one third. We will have an in-depth discussion about it subsequently. Uh, this is just to give you how the paper looks like. Okay. So don't worry about anything as of now. Just make note of uh, what topics you can expect. Of course, don't start writing immediately. I'm yet to cover up the entire thing on the slide. The next, you are going to have the writing skill. This is question number five and there is going to be no subsection here. This is the letter writing, the formal letter and the informal letter. Of course, there is a choice. So depending on what you're good at, you should go for it and for five marks. Okay. Now, this is something that I always say and I have always wanted the board to do this. The informal letter is such an outdated topic. Who writes informal letters these days? I'm asking you, have you, do you remember writing an informal letter to one of your relatives? In the era where we are conducting the lecture on YouTube, informal letter, I think is an outdated topic. They should introduce how to write an email or something like that. Um, formal letters still are contemporary. Yes, there is correspondence, but informal letter, I think they should uh, be done with it by now. They should have been done with it by now. But as it is, you know, it's there. So formal or informal, you have a choice. Question number six in the writing skill. 
is about information transfer, the verbal to non-verbal or non-verbal to verbal. So basically, what is verbal to non-verbal and what is non-verbal to verbal, the vice versa. Uh, when you write a passage and the content is given to you, you write it in a pass paragraph format or a passage format, you are converting that to the verbal thing. And the diagram, the pie diagram, uh, the flowchart, the timetable, itinerary, if they have provided, that is all non-verbal. When you write about it, it becomes verbal. So you are, uh, you have a choice here. And if you ask me, the choice is very simple. You always go from the verbal to the non-verbal part. I would want you to always go for this. It's always better to go for this part, the verbal to the non-verbal part. The B, section B over here, the section A and section B. So the section B here is view, counter view or speech writing. In my opinion, speech writing is a little better. Uh, view, counter view, of course, if you're good at debates, if you're good at argument, stating your point, well then go for that. Otherwise, speech writing is, uh, well, in my opinion, the better choice. I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. In speech writing, there is a definite format. There's always a definite format. So you uh, welcome the people, you say good morning, respected uh, principal, teachers, teaching and the non-teaching staff. Then at the closure, you thank the audience for their wonderful time. Thanks for lending the years. You say all those things. There are marks for that. So speech writing is, um, my my uh, opinion is speech writing is a little better. But however, if you're good at making your arguments, uh, stating your point, then view counter view is just for you. What else do we have there? Uh, we have the last section, which is the creative writing. Now here again, this question number seven, you have two sections, A and B. In the section A, you have expand the idea or report writing for five marks. Now you should notice one thing that there are always these options at your disposal. It is very important whenever you are given a choice that you make a good choice. The board has not enforced anything on you. They have been kind enough to give us the choices. So make a good choice. See what you're good at. See whether there are marks or format. See what the questions are. Uh, and depending on the question, treat it on its merits and then make a good choice, a better choice. So that is about the creative uh, writing section A. Let's go to section B. What you find there is develop a story or narrating an experience. You have got to do one of those things. So in, a, in developing a story, well, they will tell you either the start or the end or in narrating an experience, they'll share a situation with you uh, and you would have to narrate that experience in your own words for five marks. Now, if you total everything, well, that comes to 80 marks. And uh, I hope that you're clear with how your English paper is going to look like. And it is here that I'm going to give you a solid, let's say, uh, five minutes, maybe four minutes. Four minutes will be enough for you to jot down everything that you see here. Make sure that you utilize four minutes. Don't write it in a very messy sort of a manner because I want you to keep this until March 2021. So your time has started and please write down properly. I shall see you after the end of these four minutes.
<clears throat> hope you are jotting it down very properly guys there is a reason i am asking you to do this properly nobody does this every each and every lecture just done once and you should always keep that in mind always use one single notebook be a good student A minute more guys a minute more Half a minute. The time is almost up, guys. Hope you are done. Okay, the time is up and I hope that you had written it properly in case I repeat this in case you are you are not done for some reason this video will be there in the channel you can again revisit and do it okay but it is better to do with the flow so I thought four minutes is okay for that and I'm sure that you are done let's see what our uh, friends are saying in the chat yes they were done and they were neatly done I'm proud of all of you magnificent guys it's simply amazing I'm proud of you Okay, so let us now continue uh, with what you can expect individually in each section. So far, if you remember, what we have seen is how the sections look. This is what we have studied. So now we will dive into each section individually. Okay, so let us see. So now we are talking about the weightage here. Uh, I will urge you that you will, you shall not write while I am explaining. Don't lose the procedure. Okay, the. The, the procedure remains the same let me explain and then I will give you enough time to jot down all the points so what's the weightage it is here where you're drawing a graphical representation that's what I was talking about now let me come on camera because this is about drawing all the best I have tried my best this is the pie diagram I didn't have to draw it so I'm lucky uh, in your notepad also you can just go about writing the percentages if you are good at drawing then finish it fast otherwise you can just jot it down but hold on let me first explain what my observations are about and my idea is behind this um, what you should remember is that the myth I was talking about the myth the students have well, sir, so I'll just go to the, uh, you know, go for the English paper, go to the examination hall and come out with flying colors. Because in English, you know, you have paragraphs, the passages are given, there's a scene passage. You know what, I'll just read the passage and I'll get full marks. Misconception. Now, when you look at this pie diagram, you should realize that there is something called as preparation in English. You will be fooling yourself if you tell that, okay, there's no need for preparation. There will be passages. I'll just go there, attempt and come back. You'll be in trouble. So let us go and study each section and let us see what value it carries. So what I'm saying is that the, uh, the scene passages, let's talk about the textual passages. So this particular section that you see here, Yes, it is important. So you have the passages. I'm not saying that you don't have the passages, but look at that. It carries 25% of the eight. This is about the 80 marks. 25% of that are textual passages. So that's not everything. 
Okay, the poetry section, where well, here you have your 12%. But now comes the part where, you, where the knowledge of English language in general is going to help you. It is very important, guys, you understand this. So that is why I always say, have a habit of conversation. Talk to your friends. This is another reason why I don't use Hindi while I'm explaining you the topics. Whenever I do any explanation, I intentionally use English all the time because that is the way you're going to practice and that is the way you're going to get to listen to good English. So make sure that your overall English language understanding is there. Again, let me take you back to the pie diagram to make my point. What about these creative writing? 19% is that the textbook? No, sir. They will give you a situation. They will give you a story. Now, how are you ev ever going to expand the story if you have never ever spoken in English? That's my point. The textbooks, yes, they are important. The chapters, scene passages, agreed. But overall, you have to be good at language to score well in language. It's not just about going there, attempting the passages, uh, reading the passage, writing the answer. It's not all. What else is there in the chart? What else is there? You have these writing skill section that accounts also for 13 marks. Okay. So again, writing skill is also letter writing. We saw that. So how are you going to write and make your own sentences if you have never attempted or practiced them? So it will be on my agenda to make that happen, to give you enough practice. But you should be willing also to practice and do things sincerely. We were talking about the language study. I hope you have not forgotten that. We were talking about the language study where the, the weightage was four marks of easy questions. If you remember, four marks of uh, challenging questions. And finally, there will be a section of uh, challenging questions uh, for two marks. So overall, you have got 10 marks over there. And what about this unseen passage? Well, that's also important because you will never have seen those passages. You will have to attempt. Also, there will be personal response in each of them. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the unseen passage and the seen passage. This is also something to uh, watch out. I was talking about your ability to communicate. Personal response is your ability to communicate. You have to understand that. They are going to ask you your opinion. How are you going to put your opinion if you have never even tried it? I'm saying this and I can't, I cannot stress on this enough. You have to be a good student and practice speaking English and uh, be in regular touch. Listen to my lectures as keenly and uh, over and over if possible. Okay, and practice. Uh, that's all about what you can learn from this pie diagram and I'm going to give you all three minutes to copy this as neatly as you can in three minutes. Uh, don't make it messy and I also don't take more than three minutes because there is more for us to do. Okay, so let me set the countdown now and I've agreed to give you three minutes for this. Your time starts now. Guys, as far as these, uh, this particular slide, the pie diagram is concerned, you may either just write down point wise, like point number one, creative writing, 19%. Uh, just write it down in points, language study, 12%. You can do it in points, those who are not good at drawing. I can understand that. You can just write down, jot it down as point number one. Uh, textual passage 25% point number two poetry 12% or something like that Those who are good and can manage should draw because these are your notes Whatever you're writing will serve as your notes going uh, in a later at a later stage you will need this I'm sure you're loving this because this is like knowing your enemy, as I said. Very important, guys. When you know what you're going to face, you're better prepared.
a minute more now so you can see that in the chat your friends are already saying that they are done don't worry there is a, under a minute left i shall continue as soon as the time is up another 20 second more last 10 seconds and the time is up i want to talk about one more thing here i have seen my experience is about 20 years now 20 years if you ask me i like to share one big secret with you this is the right time to share it because this is our first ever lecture for 10th standard uh, for this batch we are going we are starting from today the thing is i have seen those students do well who number one maintain their notebooks properly so that in in march next year you should be in custody with this when you are a good student and also uh, maintaining their textbooks so often you will complain of student losing their textbook they gave it to a friend and the friend never returned it to them a lot of things happen 10th standard is not the year for those kind of errors please keep your books properly make your notes preserve them take good care of your books and there is a reason why it's not like if you lose the book you won't get one from the market but the notes that you have made the markings last lecture we did talk about the color coding if you remember or if you use highlighters you must have, you, you will make notes i'm sure how will you get a book with the markings done already you will get a new book all right but your book is your book so if you are asking looking for a secret tip from your master in the first lecture this is it maintain your books be a good student you will get good marks show some discipline and sincerity you will get good marks if you do that let's continue with the ppt now what else will you find the next section is the language study remember we talked about these 4 plus 4 plus 2 marks uh, easy questions medium level questions and challenging questions the total is 10 marks so now the board has actually told us what kind of uh, questions they want us to prepare what topics they want us to study there are <laughs> i want to share this with you there are 21 i'll say it again there are 21 topics for us to prepare of course they are easy topics but it's a uh, quite a quite a long list there so 21 topics and i'm going to share all the 21 topics with you uh, make sure again that you first listen and then jot down i will again give you the time 21 uh, topics are there nobody will share this with you every now and then listen to them very carefully so what are these uh, topics the first compound words i'm sure you've heard of them even in ninth standard we did touch upon them that's one of the topics then you have infinitives and gerunds we will talk about it because there are a lot of uh, students who get confused in this because they both can carry ing forms so we'll talk about it then you have arranging the sequence in an alphabetical order it's a very easy thing to do but of course you have to be careful if there are two words with the same starting letter so it's not like they'll give you apple and zebra to arrange so it's a very important thing because it's it's a 10th standard topic so they won't give you like apple ball cat and zebra and then you were able to do it alphabetically great you got point now no it's very important it's more complicated than that so the first letter the second letter the the way they will appear chronological order in terms of how they will appear in the dictionary so it's very important thing i'm sure in 9th standard you might have done this i'm not very sure but you might have 
The next one is the word chain. Now this is like the antakshari of words, the word chain. So the word will, uh, let's say if there is word, uh, for example, piano. Now piano ends with O. So the next word you say is Oscar. Now Oscar ends with R. So then you say raincoat. Now I'm sure you understood the point. It's the antakshari of words. Okay. What do we have after that? Mm, the topic to study is punctuations. It's a very important thing. Punctuations so often uh, overlooked. By the way, talking of punctuations, I'm going to share a very interesting example with you. You're going to love this. Uh, people ask me why punctuations are so important. What purpose does it serve, sir? Take a look at the two lines I'm writing here. Okay. And you will yourself understand the importance of punctuations. Okay. The difference is massive. This is the line. I'm going to put a comma here and then a full stop. In the next one, I'm going to use the exact same words. But now I am not going to put a comma. I have no doubt that you realize the difference and I'm going to say it, okay? I have no doubt that you understand what the difference is. Uh, the comma makes a massive difference. The first one is, let's eat, grandma. There's a comma. Let's eat, grandma. The second one is, let's eat, grandma. In the first one, you invite your grandma to the dining table. In the second one, she becomes pretty much the menu very important and I'm sure that you actually have understood. The example is absolutely brilliant. So those who think, sir, punctuations, come on, how's that important? Well, it makes a big difference. It does. Again, let us eat grandma and let us eat grandma. I'm sure that you love this example. Let's get back to what we are going to study. We are going to study spot the error and correct the sentence. The seventh is hidden word. So you would have to finish the word with, uh, or with hidden letters or maybe there are words that you have to fill in in order to complete. It can also be like a fill in the blank or something. Then there are types of sentences. But I'm sure you've understood all guys. I'm sure that you've understood all. And don't worry, each of them will be, uh, you know, dealt individually, of course, later on. Types of sentences, of course, you know. The participle, the present and the past participle. Then you have the homophones and homograph. I am very sure that you know there is a difference. There are words with the same spelling, different sound. There are words with different sound, but the same spelling. Yes. So those kind of questions. Clauses, tenses, direct and indirect speech change the voice. So now you must be getting a hang of it because there are 21 topics. I've put them seven in one column. And the last particular column here will be, we start with word register. Now what is a word register? They will give you a topic and you have to write down all the words related to that particular uh, topic. Let's say they ask you to uh, make a word register on classroom. So what are the words related to classroom? You'll write down, you know, the whiteboard, marker, benches, the fan, the air conditioning, whatever is inside the classroom, teachers, students, books. So that is a word register. You compile all the words related to a particular topic. That's a word register. I'm sure in ninth standard you've done that. Don't worry if you've not done that, we're doing it this year. Degrees of comparison, the positive, superlative, comparative, Modal auxiliaries, very important. It's not model, it's modal. Modal auxiliaries. You have various kinds of uh, modal auxiliaries and how to use them. Then you have the simple compound complex sentences. Now, a lot of these topics will be covered um, in various videos on our channel. It is very important that time to time you check the videos on our channel. In fact, the simple complex compound video is already available on our channel. I strongly recommend that you go and watch it. 
simple complex compound this is even for affirmative negative i've already made a video so go ahead and watch those videos and the other topics of course i've said that we are going to discuss them each and every topic do not worry we'll go in depth and study what else do we have now i think we need three more let's go back yes we need three more so you have words in meaningful sentences so they will give you the words and you will have to use them uh, in your own sentences meaningfully of course parts of speech there are eight parts of speech i'm sure noun pronoun adjectives prepositions we want to study everything finally transformation of sentences so if you see there are 21 different grammar topics for us to prepare guys this is very important for you to make a note of this particular slide has a lot of important content and i'm going to start now the time i'm going to give you three minutes for this three minutes i believe three minutes should be enough let's make it uh, uh, four minutes because i'll tell you why um, make a side note about what each and every topic represents so let's give you four minutes for this and we will continue after that so your time actually starts now make proper notes guys Guys, in the chat window, you can tell me if the font size is proper. I have updated my font size. There were people who were saying that they were uncomfortable with a smaller font. I've increased the font. Kindly let me know if you are happy with it. is about a minute more before we proceed Half a minute more.
okay last 10 seconds if you are done writing it you should share that on the chat the time is up let's see what our friends are sharing on the chat well they are done well okay thank you so much for finishing it on time uh, we are going to dive now into the PPT straight away again for the next section now we are we uh, in this slide we dealt with what topics are to be studied for language study now what we will do is we will study what kind of questions you can expect when it comes to the passages now again stop writing and look at the explanation look at your screens so what i'm talking about is this uh, th these questions what sort of questions will you expect the scene passage will be for 10 marks we saw that in previous slide there will be five questions of two marks each so 10 marks what are the kind of questions that you can anticipate? That's what we are going to study here. The first question will be simple factual question for two marks. Now this is, I think, is similar to what you studied in 9th standard. Although in the 10th standard, this is the very first lecture where you write everything. It is a very important thing. So these are the kind of questions you can anticipate. It's a very important thing. True or false, kind over here. Complex factual questions, well, you have those for two marks as well, where you have complete the table, web chart, complete the following, rearrange the order. These are the questions you will find there in complex factual question. Then vocabulary based questions for two marks, where you have find the word from the passage, word list, that is word register and find the odd one. Then you have contextual grammar activities and you have the grammar, of course, content there. We've already studied the in the previous slide. There are 21 different topics to study. And my favorite, the personal response question for two marks that would be here. So this is very important that you make note of everything that you find here. And this time I'm going to give you three minutes so that you can jot this down properly. And your time starts now. Let's make sure you're writing this properly. So now you know that there is a lot to prepare when it comes to the English exam. It's not just you go read the passage, you write the answers, come back home with flying colors. Well, this is very important. When you know this, you can prepare accordingly. As and when you are done writing this, kindly let me know. There is a minute more for you.
about half a minute more guys okay the final 15 seconds let me know in the chat once you are done jotting it out properly okay the time is up let us see what our friends are saying okay they are they are done with it which is fantastic brilliant indeed okay now let us dive straight into the discussion on what you can expect when it comes to the uh, poetry section so when it comes to the scene poem you would have one poem for five marks you've seen that what are the kind of questions you can expect in the poetry section so there will be one question for on simple factual activities for two marks there will be one question for complex factual activities for two marks these, this, these are the kind of questions that you can expect uh, and finally you will have a poetic device question for one mark so basically two marks over here you have two marks over here and a mark over here makes it five you can expect web chart you can expect match the column true or false and over here you can expect complete the following your interpretation that is what do you think correct uh, choosing the correct alternatives here you have the figures of speech, rhyme scheme or imagery. We're going to study this everything in detail. For this one, I'm going to give you just two minutes. Just make sure that you start jotting it down and please be done in two minutes. I sincerely believe two minutes are enough for this one. Get started with this. The time starts now. I am very sure that you have covered web chart in the 9th standard and I always have been saying throughout this lecture that if there is anything that I have mentioned here that is new to you, well you simply don't have to worry because I will get it done. And uh, please uh, make it a point that you pass it to your friends who could not attend this session that yes, there is this COVID-19 pandemic but uh, there are things that we all are doing so that our studies are not affected make sure that they know about this lecture in case for some reason they have missed tell them where to find it it will be in my channel you can go to the video section and find it a minute more for you <clears throat> let me know in the chat of course chat window that you're done with it Half a minute more. Time is almost going to be up. The time is up indeed. Let us see what our friends are saying in the chat. They are done. I will explain what the interpretation and everything is at the moment. Let's cover up one final section that I have to do, which is the critical appreciation of the poem. So what are the points to be covered in critical appreciation? The good news is that the points are absolutely the same. Absolutely the same. Whatever it is that you studied in the ninth standard. So please jot this down. You probably should take not more than a minute to do this. Just a minute. Should be fine. Your time starts now. As make sure that you are writing this properly 
and by the way uh, later on after this i'm going to tell you how you will um, deal with the homework how we're going to do the assignments going forward let me know in the chat window if you're done jotting it down I sincerely hope that you are done jotting this down as usual I'm saying this repeatedly that this is a video that will be there on the channel let me share something interesting with you how are we going to deal with the homework with the assignments I'm going to give you some important assignments as homework well relax there's time for that let's say uh, after two or three more such lectures I will share with you either my telegram channel or the Google Classroom ID. I prefer Google Classroom, but if I want, I'll share the Telegram channel as well. That is the place where you will submit your homework. Well, this is a good tool for the lecture, but there will be assignments and I will share the good work on the channel. You know that. Previously, I've shared nice uh, crossword presentations and the phrases, um, <clears throat> charts that you made. So I will share that, but that will be the place for you to do the homework. Uh, and that is all for this lecture and I am really happy I was very excited about this and I'm very happy that we could uh, discuss the paper pattern I am very sure that this has given you an insight about how the English paper is it must have clarified any myth or misconception that you had and uh, I will eagerly wait to meet you the next time always remember that if your lecture is the <clears throat> second lecture in the order or you're coming from some other lecture to join my videos make sure that the link will be there shared with you on the whatsapp group or you will find the video in uh, my channel you know that okay so since you were the first right now you just came to the live stream but otherwise you'll find the video in my channel okay so up until next time we will uh, be safe, we will stay at home, but we will start our studies, okay? I hope that this lecture was resourceful. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye.